Hi, and welcome to the Vention Assembly series. My name is Jeremy, and I'm in charge of education here at Vention. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Rack and Pinion Actuator. This includes its basic setup, assembly process, as well as compatible hardware. The Rack and Pinion Actuator that we have here is designed to be modular in length, much like our Belt Rack Actuator, meaning you can customize its overall travel to meet your application needs. Due to its modular nature, however, some assembly on-site is required. For this assembly, we'll see how it's done using our linear guides and bearings. As for tools required, you'll need a 5mm, 3mm, and 2.5mm Allen key. To make installation easier, the Rack and Pinion installation tool is also recommended. Now, let's get to the assembly. To start off, take your first gear rack segment and slide them into the extrusion T-slot channel. This is where the rack and pinion insulation tool comes in handy. What you do is mesh the teeth on the tool with the teeth on the rack, and with that, you can slide the rack segment up and down the aluminum extrusion profile with ease. From here, we want to install the compression block that will later hold the rack segments in place. To do this, you first need to install two M18 nuts in your extrusion channel. You can then fasten down the compression block using the shorter 16 mm fasteners. With a compression block in place, you can then install the set screw using the 3 mm Allen key, and then the compression bolt using the 2.5 mm Allen key. One thing to note is only tighten this to hand tight, as it will be tightened properly later on. At this point, if you have multiple racks, you install them here in your longer rack and pinion setup. One thing to note is that no special adjustment is required since the racks are designed in such a way that when placed against each other, the appropriate tooth spacing is maintained at each junction. Once all the rack segments are in place, you can then install the second compression block at the other end. With both blocks in place, evenly tighten the set screws at either end until all slack in the rack segments has been absorbed. Once done, you can then tighten the compression screws. With the rack system in place, we can now install the housing and pinion assembly. This part comes completely pre-assembled, so all that's required is to mesh the pinion, with the rack segment and install your selected guidance system. In our case, since we're using linear rails and bearings, simply line up the counterboard holes in your housing with those on the linear bearings. You can then fasten them down using a shorter 12 mm M8 screws using the five mm Allen key. To prevent the actuator from over-traveling, it's recommended to install end stop bumpers. This is done using a rubber bumper and gusset assembly and fastening it just behind each of the compression blocks. Once installed, run the housing up and down the full travel of the actuator by hand to make sure it's smooth and does not jam. After the actuator has been set up, you can attach the powertrain components and end stop sensors. There are two recommended locations for mounting the sensors. The first is directly to the housing to any structure that you have attached to it so that it would be triggered by the end stop. The second is directly on the extrusion itself facing the underside of the gantry. In this configuration, additional sensor triggers must be added if you're using linear bearings. Prior to running your actuator, you should apply grease to the rack and run the housing up and down the entire travel to evenly distribute it across the rack segments. The rack and pinion actuator does require maintenance at regular intervals and should be serviced as per our maintenance guide. If you do not have this attached to your structure using the ends, it's recommended to attach end caps as well.
now that we're done with the assembly, we'll take a look at the compatible hardware. For guided systems, this actuator can be used with either our linear guides and bearings that we have mounted here, or our nylon reinforced roller wheels. For the powertrain components, the rack and pinion actuator can be driven using either our small, medium, or large NEMA 34 stepper servo motors. Moving on, if more torque is required, both the standard and right angle 5 to 1 reduction gearboxes can be used. Where situations require, a power off brake may also be mounted between the motors and the actuator housing. And finally, if you're looking to drive the actuator manually, the lockable handwheel is also an option. Moving on, both the flush and standard inductive proximity sensors are compatible with this actuator. Finally, to mount the actuator to your structure, this can be accomplished as you would any of our standard hardware as it's built using one of our 45 by 90 millimeter extrusions as its main body. And with that, we've covered the basics of the Rack and Pinion Actuator. Thank you for watching this assembly video and please do check out the other ones in the series.